Act 9, a wave of dread hit Ashley as she pulled into her driveway and pressed the button to open the garage door. She never imagined Brett would arrive back at home first. When she walked from the garage into the house, she met her fiancé standing in the hallway. He already changed from his tux into shorts and t-shirt, so he hadn't just arrived. He obviously been waiting for her. <laughs> first, tell me nothing's wrong with you, he said, concern visible on his face, that you're okay. She nodded. I'm fine. Did you go see a doctor? No. A fire lit in his eyes. So then, where have you been? He demanded. She stared at him, a knot forming in her stomach, trying to figure out a way to explain. Just tell him, girl. I left the auction early, he spat out, worried sick about you, and you weren't even here. He braced his hands on his hip, his face red. I called you several times, straight to voicemail. I even called the hospital. You could have been dead for all I knew. Before leaving the auction, she told Brett that she was, she had almost fainted. He had no way of knowing that it was her nerves that had caused her lightheadedness and not an illness. Of course he'd, be, he'd been worried. If she had passed out while driving, she would have crashed, could have died. She could have called him when she reached the police station. Without telling him her exact location, she could have let him know that she arrived back in Briarwood safely. I'm sorry, she finally uttered. Who were you with? Not who you think. Girl, you better stop playing with that man. Okay. She can tell that he no longer trusted her, that he suspected she'd been with Ethan. It was time to tell Brett the truth. He deserved to know, especially now that her ex-husband had escaped from prison. There are some things I need to tell you. Should have told you a long time ago, she admitted. You're going to want to sit down. Okay. Brett followed her into the family room. Instead of sitting next to her on the sofa, he chose the chair opposite her, leaving a wide distance between them. Ashley could feel the hostility radiating from her fiancé and knew he'd reached his breaking point. Their entire future together hinged on his reaction to the revelation of her past. Now that she was ready to tell him about her ex-husband, she didn't quite know how to begin. From the beginning. She decided it would be best to keep her story as short and simple as possible. Just reveal, just reveal the details he needed to know. I was 17 when I met Ethan, she began. He was my first real boyfriend. In the beginning, things were wonderful between us. I thought I was in love. She paused and took a deep breath, dreading her next word. The day after I turned 18, we eloped. Brett's eyes narrowed. You've been married to someone else? How could you keep something like that important from me? And since he shot up from the chair, Brett, just hear me out, she pleaded, rising beside him. I actually couldn't let him walk away. She needed to make him understand. She touched his arm. Please sit back down. There was more than just anger evident in his face. An emotion she couldn't quite discern. Almost as if he expected her to announce that she was leaving him for an older flame. He hesitated for a moment, then returned to his chair. She eased back onto the sofa, perched on the edge. I wasn't married long, she assured him. Ethan became very abusive, and then one day he snapped. She paused, gathering her strength. Her strength. He knocked me unconscious, then threw me into a pit in the forest. He left me there to die. Brett appeared stunned. He, he did what? He tried to kill me. Her fiancé shook his head. His expression of indignation had morphed into anguish at the torture she endured. The guy's obviously a lunatic, he said. I wish you told me all of this sooner. I wanted to. I tried several times. I hated keeping this secret from you, but it was just too painful to talk about. And when Shane brought up Ethan's name, I worried that if I told you about my first marriage, after waiting for so long, you might wonder if I was hiding something else. Are you? Ashley nodded, bracing herself for Brett's reaction to the worst part of the news. Ethan was convicted of attempted murder eight years ago, she said. Yesterday, he escaped from prison. Her fiancé appeared shell-shocked as the hits kept coming. You have an ex-husband who's now an escaped convict? He stated as though trying to digest the information. He's coming after me, after us, she warned. You asked where I went yesterday. Before the bakery, I went to the prison. Ethan was up for parole, and I testified against him at the hearing. He wants revenge. Brett stood, crossed his eyes, and paced across the family room. He seemed to be considering their options. Eight years is a long time, Ashley. He probably just wants his freedom, and if he came here, he'd risk getting caught. That's what the detective said. Detective? That's where I went when I left the charity auction, to the police station. Brett nodded, as if her actions the past few days were all starting to make sense. His expressions re remained grim. Now that he knew the truth about her past, 
She hoped they could rebuild their relationship, that it would end up being stronger than before. Do you forgive me for not telling you, she asked, her heart aching. He hesitated, staring at the floor, then met her gaze. I love you, Ashley, but it's a lot to take in, he said. I need some time. She nodded, wondering how she would gain back his trust. I'm tired, he told her, calling it a night. I'll sleep in the guest room. Tears stung Ashley's eyes as she watched Brett walk from the family room into the foyer. What could she do to keep her world from crashing down around her? She knew she was on the cuffs of losing the one person she cared about the most, the man she loved more than life itself. She hoped that he would be calmer in the morning that she'd be able to talk to him, get him to understand that their relationship was more important to her than anything else. Ashley headed upstairs to the master bathroom. She washed off what was left of her makeup, dried the tears streaming down her face, and changed out of her dress and into a satin nightgown. She walked over to the window and stared out into the night, wondering how much time Brett would need to sort through his feelings. At least she no longer carried the burden of keeping her first marriage a secret. For that, she was thankful. Glancing down at the patio to her right, in the glow of the moonlight, she spotted what appeared to be a package next to her back door. There were still a few items she ordered for the wedding that had yet to be delivered, but in the past, the postman had always left their package on the front porch. She wondered what the reason was for the change. It seemed unlikely in their neighborhood, but maybe there had been reports of porch pirates in the area. Pulling on her robe, Ashley ambled down the stairs and turned off the security alarm using the keypad in the foyer. Figuring the package most likely contained the sample cocktail napkins for the wedding reception, she made her way through the family room. She peered out onto the patio, making sure no one was lurking in the shadows before she opened the back door. The box seemed far too large for napkins. The return address label bore the name of the company she ordered them from, but somehow it looked off, like the label had been torn and put back together. Stumped, she stared at the box. What if Ethan had stole her real package and replaced it with one of his own? With one of his own. He could have peeled off the label and reused it. The box might contain a bomb. Maybe she should call 911. But if she called the police and the package only held the napkins, she'd look foolish. And like the boy who cried wolf, Detective Lanson might not believe her if she ever did receive something from her ex-husband. She knelt down and placed her ear against the box. Did bombs tick or was that only in movies? <laughs> Not hearing anything, she clasped the side of the box with her fingertips and eased it upward. The weight felt right for napkins. Maybe the company had enclosed them in bubble wrap. Maybe a large box necessary. Making a large box necessary. Ashley realized she had reached the point of being paranoid. Just as her earlier package had contained the invitation she ordered, this box would contain the napkins. Not all labels were perfect. She brought the package inside and placed it onto the coffee table. She took a deep breath and then ripped off the packing tape. As she folded back the flaps of the cardboard box, fear raced down Ashley's spine. She recognized the item inside, a souvenir from her past, a weather pink teddy bear. The bear Ethan had won for her at the carnival on their first date. That's again, see you in chapter 10. <laughs>